what's up everybody welcome back to the channel and part two of my complete breakdown of all of the weapons in outriders all of the legendary weapons in outriders right now the 46 that are available to us i split this video up into two as originally i thought i could do it all in one sitting but it ended up being super super long so i didn't expect anybody to hang around for nearly 45 minutes listening to all of this but this is a continuation of it if you are looking for part one it should be up in the corner and you can go check that out and come to here but that's it let's jump right in that's us done with the lmg so then we're going to move over to pistols now we're going to go through these quickly for two reasons one pistols themselves will always be inferior in damage profile to other weapons due to the fact that their total damage at highest level is capped and cannot be as high as a normal weapon that means that we can't actually make pistol builds in this game but they are nonetheless used as a weapon that you stick stuff on that allow you to swap and deal damage you know something like moaning winds for example and specifically there's something called clip combustion which basically does exactly that now when we look at bolt and thunder which is the first one this has a tier 3 mod on it called strings of gauss now strings of gauss is what i was referring to earlier when i said that i sometimes took thunderbird and i would stick you know another aoe lightning ability on there and kind of build like a theme lightning bolt uh, or lightning weapon that was of course strings of gauss it comes off of bolt and thunder but this is really just goofing around and to me i think it's kind of like you know uh useless in a way so i would say that, that 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 i mean you could also potentially use a pistol i suppose to you know damage link things as well i guess that's something but again i feel that that's very niche and i don't see a lot of people playing it that way so for me i would probably consider bolt and thunder to be i don't even think you really care about yeah you know, maybe you want the strings of gas mod let's say let's say that's a thing for you you want to get strings of gas so we'll say mod only because we want to go grab that off there the next pistol in the list we have then is disintegrator so disintegrator also has has strings of gauss on it um but this is a so i think this is a revolver so the previous ones were pistols disintegrator is a revolver so it has a different firing profile it has a much smaller clip size of course so for me this i mean if i'm gonna stick bolt and thunder into mod only because you might want to get strings of gauss then i'd have to do the same with disintegrator it you know just to keep some form of um uh, continuity here so then when we get to the last two pistols well kind of speak of them about both of them in the same breath so we have lucky which is also a revolver this has pinball on it which says every critical shot ricochets to four enemies within five meter radius dealing the weapons double double base damage again weapons the pistols themselves have such a low damage profile compared to other weapons so this isn't a heck of a lot of damage that it deals there was a while when i was testing this that i thought that because when it ricochets and hits up to four enemies i thought those hits would apply you know different mods so if i had pinball on here and maybe you know something else that that would have a proc effect like maybe i have a pinball on here and claymore torrent and then every enemy that it hits has a chance of proccing claymore torrent again that unfortunately is not how it works so to me lucky and pinball can kiss my ass and it can go to the useless category the last one's torment and agony and torment and agony has clip combustion on it which is it's tier one mod on the gun and it's basically a mini very mini moaning winds and so generally speaking torment and agony is the pistol that i have on all of my characters by default so in that way it has to be considered based in slot by me because i don't carry any other pistols on any of my classes and i essentially just replaced the tier 3 mod on there which is called judgment enforcer which says shots mark enemies when reloading deal five times your weapons damage to each marked enemy uh, marks are removed when you change your weapon so i swap that out with something like moaning winds or so and then i have another stick where i have this reloading mechanism on next up we have rifles so the first one here is blight bearer and uh basically what a rifle and what separates that from essentially a sniper rifle is these don't usually don't have a scope and it's essentially like a one-shot rifle or in some cases it has a small clip size like for instance blight bearer which has eight so you have one shot variants of rifles and you have you know standard ones so blight bearer is the standard one this has burst of decay on it that says critical shots cause explosions that inflict toxic on enemies within a five meter radius again there are other ways for you to get toxic onto enemies specifically if you are playing a technomancer with blighted rounds so you kind of like wasting a mod slot here by having this here because you are then 
missing a additional damage like slot like killing spree that you could have on here or whatever so the point is that this is kind of like i would say weak source and again to me this is sort of like a useless this is also not a very well represented weapon class you don't see a lot of people running around with rifles so um if you do see people with rifles it's definitely not going to be a blight bearer next up we have molten idola now i really like ravenous locust which is on here it's a tier 3 mod that deals a lot of aoe damage over a uh, 15 second period and it actually uh, inflicts weakness on enemies as well which is really good now i've tried to make this gun work i've messed around with it um and in certain applications i actually do i do enjoy it i still th i still think that sniper rifles or rifles in general of this class are not as strong as they should be in the game and uh, therefore i i don't rate this as high but if somebody forces me to if i'm trying to force myself to play with this class of weapon then i definitely think martin edler is a is a good choice for that i will say limited use and not solid choice because again you don't see a lot of snipers running around but if you want to do that it's probably a good choice radox gaze is the next one this is a standard variant so it has a clip size of eight this has weakness trap on it which is a tier 3 mod that says that it causes explosions dealing damage and inflicting weakness on enemies in a five meter radius now the same reason that i rated molten idler high i would rate this high as well because again you're getting that weakness effect you're also getting additional damage that are spread over an area and it means that your follow-up shots are actually going to deal a bunch more damage because oh no wait me i keep making that <laughs> mistake so this is weakness not vulnerable right so this means that the enemy themselves will actually deal less damage to you so so that that means then that uh, you could essentially use it to debuff an enemy so that they you know deal less damage which is pretty cool i guess i think if i'm gonna rate uh you know if i'm gonna rate molten idler as a limited use i would have to rate this in the same category because you might see people using it for the same reason once again if you are a sniper this could be a potential good choice for you but i will say this and i'll say the same thing that i said with assault rifles and tactical versions of assault rifles is that the epics are just way better if you can get a decently rolled epic a purple sniper rifle of whichever kind you're looking for whether it's a single shot one or one with a clip or whatever and you get a good tier 2 mod on there then it's actually going to be better than any of these ones that we've seen here so far and uh, our last one is actually a rifle by the name of twisted mercy now this has ultimate vulnerability bullets on it which as you can guess actually inflict vulnerability on your enemies that means that follow-up shots will deal more damage because the enemies will take more damage to me again this has um I don't know it's like the weirdest thing because this is a legendary rifle but it has like close range damage on it as a substat that automatically just makes me a little bit sad for it and i don't think it's really very decent so i'm gonna go ahead and stick twisted mary <laughs> twisted mary twisted mercy mercy in the burn where it belongs under useless then we get to shotguns which is one of the op classes in the game and i think we have them all mixed up here so the first one we're looking at is pump action shotguns so this is airy master and basically what it does is it sort of does a small time rift to enemies so it, it inflicts time rift on enemies time rift raises the enemy into the air for 15 seconds and this is of course a skill for the trickster that they can use but this this gun essentially does that it lifts them into the air for 15 seconds which is ridiculous that's a fairly long time but because it's a pump action shotgun and it has a clip size of three and uh, i just i i feel like the, there's there's almost no you know good application for this weapon uh i certainly think there are better not only pump action shotguns available in the game but then just in general that pump action shotguns are not that great in the game to begin with and generally speaking you want something like an automatic shotgun so in this case uh, i don't even think that mod is that great so i'm gonna go ahead and put it in useless then we get to the animoi <laughs> so love it or hate it the animoi with its mod moaning winds has certainly become a cornerstone of the sort of reload meta for outriders and i don't think that's going to change anytime soon it is really really powerful and super super efficient if you play it this way and uh, there really is no other way than just simply to take the animoi and stick it into best in slot when you combine moaning winds with something else like you know any one of the other reloading mechanisms uh whether that's uh clip clip combustion or you could essentially combine it with something like um 
radiation splash from the guillotine then it essentially this you know that just accentuates the reload damage potential that you can see from a gun like that and yeah you just cannot fault it for being as efficient as it is even though this is a style of play that is not everybody's cup of tea and not everybody loves it uh the next pump action shotgun is the anomaly effigy which is something that i've goofed around a lot with on my trickster this concentration blast tier 3 mod that it has that says killing shots cause enemies to explode dealing a certain amount of damage multiplied by the amount of enemies around there uh in a five meter radius this certainly is very very good at group clear and i really really like it on the trickster i think it's a fantastic weapon so i'm actually gonna say this is a solid choice generally speaking when you are running shotguns on a firepower trickster or even if you are playing a anomaly trickster and you're using shotguns then this can be a very interesting weapon to use and again depending on the expedition that you're in depending on whether you are you know clearing massive amounts of trash this can be highly efficient of course it loses some of its power once you start fighting single or one or two enemies standing next to each other and it's not as great anymore then but maybe you can carry this and another shotgun and you use this one for group clear and then when you have single targets you speak to something like um i don't know uh, something that deals more damage specifically to one target now i will say though that generally speaking uh, if we are talking aoe clear concentration blast is cute but claymore torrent and the uh, shadow comet does it better so uh, absolutely that's why this is not in the best in slot then we have body snatcher so body snatcher is also a pump action shotgun this says killing shots teleport another enemy to the place where the previous one died works within a y meter radius of the target so there's like a certain amount of space that you can do this teleportation in now i have people telling me all the time to give this gun a try or to rather to give this mod a try i just i i think it has a fairly limited application and and it has a, a pretty sort of wonky effect as well uh, I think if you play solo, this can be cute. If you play in a group, people might get upset with you by, you know, you moving targets around and them trying to hit them and maybe they lose their bullets or, you know, anything like that. So for me, um, and, and because I haven't goofed around with this, I can not honestly put this into mod only because I just have no want, no need to actually mess around with this. So to me, unfortunately, this would be useless. Then we get over to a gun called the Bulwark, which is an automatic shotgun. And this has a... a what is it ultimate anomaly surge i believe critical shot spawn and anomaly energy blast that deals is that correct though isn't ultimate bulwark the one that has the bleeding bullets on it shit i think this is an old tooltip nonetheless the fact that i don't recall this weapon and you know how good it could potentially be or not be is probably indicative of how meh this weapon is so again it's a fully auto shotgun so it has a fairly large clip size 20 but it just has a very bad mod combination on there and so i would think that the bulwark is as useless as uh, tits on a fish then we get over to darkness charmer now darkness charmer has grand opening which is a mod that we saw before already landing a hit with the first bullet in a magazine creates a powerful explosion this is really good um so i mean when when i say it's a mod that we've seen before we, we it's kind of like scrap grenade right so i've been messing around with a sniper rifle that uses scrap grenade and uses grand opening both at the same time and that really creates this insane anomaly bullet that just deals a whole crap ton of damage the first time after you reload so it's a good combination to have this on a you know weapon that basically um has has one shot potential or just has one bullet so when you reload like a rifle you constantly have access to this effect however i don't think that there's really a way for you to get both of these onto the same gun since both of them are tier three you could take this darkness charmer and put scrap grenade onto here but then again it's on a pump action shotgun and it means that you'll have to be sort of like very much in the fray and you know just putting the gun up against somebody's back and pulling that trigger now I'm pretty sure I've messed around with this in the in the past. It sounds familiar. It sounds like something I do, but I remember not being that impressed by it. And for that reason and that reason alone, I would probably say that Darkness Trauma is also unfortunately useless. Um, I do see that I put the Juggler in as the mod only, so maybe for the same reason I need to put this in as well. So maybe you want to farm this mod off so you can try and put it onto a rifle or a sniper rifle. So I'll leave it up there for that reason alone. 
Then we have Death Shield. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. So, of course, Death Shield had Fortress on it. Fortress was one of the most, if not the most, sought after mod back in the day before it was completely changed or nerfed, as some people would put it. I still think that Death Shield is a really, really strong, strong choice, a solid choice as a shotgun. It is an automatic shotgun. The only problem I have with the Death Shield is that it has such a small clip size. It's only 10. So um, to me, Death Shield with that Fortress effect, I still think Fortress is fairly decent, especially on a Trickster. So I think it's a solid choice and we'll stick it in there. Then we have Enoch's Blessing, which is a pump shotgun. And this basically has, I think, Gravedigger's Frenzy on it, which is... No, I think Gravedigger's Frenzy is like the tier 2 mod. Um, but either which way, you know, Enoch's Blessing is not really uh, that great because it's a pump action shotgun. And again, because it has a terrible combination of mods basically available on this so i'm gonna go ahead and put that on useless then we have funeral pyre probably the most used and best gun in the game hands down funeral pyre comes with a tier 3 mod called shadow comet which calls down comets that deal basically damage uh, like aoe damage to enemies in a 3.5 meter radius uh one of the cool things about shadow comet is if you fire the gun from the hip you can pull down multiple shadow comets from because the shotgun it has a chance of procking it on all of the pallets when they fly out so it is absolutely best in slot and it is usually you, uh, people are using funeral pyre and the animoy when you are playing this kind of like reload meta so you run around with this and you have your moaning winds and radiation splash on your animoy and you just sort of cycle them out then we have Golem's Limb, another <laughs> pump action shotgun, which is just a waste of time. This has Golem Rising on it, which killing shots grant you a protective Golem effect for three seconds. Golem is, of course, a skill that the Devastator employs. The fact that it only gives you this effect for three seconds is not that great. And again, in general, you are kind of like wasting a mod slot here because I don't really think Golem makes sense for any one of the other classes to have. And in the case of the Devastator, if you want Golem, then you're just going to go ahead and choose that as a skill. And you're also just going to add mods that make it better. So Golem's Limb is useless. Then we are going to get to the Guillotine. The Guillotine is a pump action shotgun. It's a really cool looking pump action shotgun, but it has a mod on it called radiation splash which is part of that whole meta that i was talking about earlier so you definitely want to be peeling the mod off this and for that reason i'm going to stick it into mod only would you use this as your primary weapon and actually put uh instead of having radiation splash uh, sorry instead of having radiation splash on the animoy could you put the 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 moaning winds on this instead absolutely the sky's the limit you can do whichever one you want but um it's just generally you know thought of more as the fact that that the animoy is the one that actually gets carried it's weird how it worked out that way but it is what it is so um then we are getting over to another pump action shotgun called the high roller the high roller has a clip size of three which is disgusting and this also this has embalmer's rage on it which is the tier three mod that says for eight seconds after a killing shot all following shots will be critical shots this sounds fantastic but again it it means that that on a shotgun i don't think this makes a lot of sense if you if you bring this onto another weapon where where you are getting a lot of really good crit shots like maybe like a tactical variant uh assault rifle then this can shine but it is outshined by other damage ramp up mods like uh dark sacrifice and killing spree for example so unfortunately in bomber trade is just not that good i think it is something that you could mess around with for sure but um but yeah for me i just think like maybe maybe you'll want to farm the mod off it but i don't think you'll actually be running around with this shotgun using it so i'll put it as a mod only situation there maybe you want to goof around with some embalmer's rage and get a whole bunch of crit shots then for the last weapons i think we have smgs left and we have sniper rifles so we'll go sniper rifles first the headhunter is a legendary bolt action sniper rifle which has burst of decay on it which inflicts toxic on enemies when you crit an enemy uh, and, and uh, it'll do this kind of like aoe toxic effect the same reasons why i rated the other weapons lower that causes toxic effect is because you would probably play this on a technomancer and a technomancer already has blighted rounds, so it's already gonna basically put toxic on there so i think the headhunter is probably useless then we have Icarus, which is one of the nicer looking automatic sniper rifles. It's so clean, really cool looking gun. 
This has an ultimate anomaly surge on it, critical shot spawn and anomaly energy blast that deals damage to enemies in a two meter radius. Again, it's good, but it's just not that good. Uh, I, I think that sniper rifles are, are probably one of the classes in the game that need the most work. So I'm I'm not too happy with, with, with the state that they're in right now and the fact that their damage doesn't scale so well once we get to duos and trios content. And also due to the fact that just it's relatively difficult to play with sniper rifles in those kinds of setups because of you know the fact that if you just even miss it's such an extremely sweaty way to play as well though because you know any any shot that you are not hitting a crit you are sacrificing a lot of dps that you would have just automatically gotten if you were using assault rifle uh, or a tactical assault rifle for that matter so unfortunately i think icarus is also useless next up we have the iceberg this has Winter Blast on it, which says critical shots create an icy blast and inflicts freeze on enemies within a four meter radius. I actually think this is one of the better ones. I, I think the Iceberg is probably the, one of these sniper rifles that has the highest potential. If you want to start dipping your toes into using a sniper rifle or more specifically a legendary sniper rifle, and you want to capitalize on a good combination of effects, you can't go wrong with Winter Blast. The main reason why it's so sexy is because when enemies are frozen, it means your follow-up shot is going to definitely be a crit because you'll be able to isolate heads or crit spots quite easily. So I think for that, the Iceberg probably has a limited use and uh, probably is, is, is the one you should go for if you are interested in playing Sniper. Then we have the Landlubber. Uh, great name, terrible gun. This uh, It also looks really cool though. This has Legendary Minefield, which is a tier 3 mod that says that when you crit, it spawns explosives around. It's like little mines that fall out of the enemy, and these deal uh, damage in a 5 meter radius, and it has a relatively low cooldown as well. This is a lightweight variant of the bolt action sniper rifles, though, so this has a slightly larger clip size, and I think it also reloads quicker, if I'm not mistaken, but... Um, Nonetheless, I, I, I still think that the Winter Blast, the one that we had before from the Iceberg, is probably your better choice because, yes, this deals damage, probably deals more damage overall, but the point is that you can't guarantee your, those crit shots where, at least with the Iceberg, you can guarantee that your second, your follow-up shots are usually going to be a crit. So I'm going to say Landlubber, unfortunately, is also useless. Then we get over to, I think it's the last two, the first one being Mind Mugger. This essentially says anomaly mutation shots on enemies afflicted by any status condition mul multiplicates and mutates into a different one. Basically what this does is it essentially takes any status on an enemy and then sort of like like creates another status and, and, and just you know mutates it into a different one. So you can essentially stack like you can start out with something having like freeze on it and then when you shoot it again then it gets toxic on it and then when you shoot it again then it's like then it gets bleed on it and you can essentially just keep doing that. Uh, again on paper this sounds fantastic but I don't I it's weird for me that this is on a on a sniper rifle. It would make sense for me that 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 mod needs to maybe be on a different gun a gun with a higher rate of fire or something that you are closer so that you're also using your abilities to actually like let's say for instance you're playing a pyro and so now you are using heat wave and you're setting stuff on fire so you can get that first status on enemies and when they're burning you shoot them with the gun so that then you start spreading the statuses so um i just think it's it's poorly placed on this weapon but i definitely think it is an interesting mod i haven't messed around with it nearly enough but i definitely stripped the mod off this sucker then the last legendary bolt action sniper rifle is the spirit hunter now this is ultimate bone shrapnel on you now bone shrapnel tier 2 bone shrapnel is a fantastic mod it's a great aoe mod and it's one of the preferred ones you would want on a epic tactical assault rifle for instance this is the tier 3 version of this and this is that critical shots detonate the enemy's bones so the thing with tier 2 tier 2 uh, uh, bone shrapnel is that that just says killing shots this says critical shots so this one you can probably apply more but it means that you have to hit those crits I find the tier 2 one more reliable because you just have to kill the first enemy and then you start seeing those procs you know, coming out of it. Whereas this one, if you fuck up with your shots and you don't get criticals, then you kind of lose that damage as well. So unfortunately, I still think tier 2 uh, ultimate bone shrapnel or, or rather tier 2 bone shrapnel is better than ultimate bone shrapnel. And for that reason, I'm actually going to stick this into useless. Then 
we have some submachine guns left four to be exact the first one is the daimyo again a cool looking gun this has ultimate storm whip on it which of course we saw before on uh, good old uh, mr thunderbird and for the same reason that i stuck thunderbird into useless i'm unfortunately gonna have to do the same thing with mr daimyo then we get to fatal symbiote and a fatal symbiote has dark sacrifice on it which is probably one of the best ramp up damage mods and basically it's the kind of like the the your brother-in-law to, to to killing spree whereas this one just ramps up a hell of a lot quicker and uh you pay for that with some you know life some life drain on you so definitely i don't see a lot of people running around with uh submachine guns in general in this game are also not in a great place they have kind of like small ish clips with an insane rate of fire and they have a very very limited range so the application by the time you're that close in range it's better to use a shotgun so they unfortunately lose to the better shotguns in the game but you absolutely do want dark sacrifice so we're gonna go ahead and stick this into the mod only category then we have the migraine this has a mod on called bombs ahead which says killing shots turn enemies into an anomaly bomb dealing a certain amount of damage and this has a cooldown i have tried so much to make this gun work i keep imagining situations where you you know shoot two or three enemies dead and then one of them gets the bomb on that bomb explodes and you know kills another bunch of enemies but i certain i i certainly think that this anomaly bomb that it spawns just doesn't deal enough damage that's really the problem that's really the issue so to me the, i would say that uh, the migraine unfortunately and i mean it's a really weird looking gun as well so maybe on that reason alone i'm gonna go ahead and stick it into the useless category and then last but certainly not least we have the wicker the wicker has status power on it so again if you're looking for a weapon that has that on there it's a good thing and the thing about the wicker is it it flicks ash on enemies now i've actually seen some moderate success with the submachine gun i've used it on my debuff pyro as another way to get ash onto enemies i uh which which is useful because a lot of you could build a pyromancer to deal a lot of additional damage to ash enemies and ash is also a really good status effect much like frozen or freeze so i actually think that wicker has some limited use and like i said i have goofed around with it quite a bit on a debuff pyro and i certainly will do it again once we get access to some more new stuff that's coming with world slayer that brings us to the end of the list thank you so much for watching this and part one i really do appreciate it this turned out to be a lot longer than i thought it would be but it is a hell of a lot of weapons we have 46 in total so i want to thank you if you spent the time time with me let me know in the comments below just like i asked you in part one what you think of my choices how would you change it i know we have very few weapons in best in slot but that's simply due to the fact that these legendaries are sort of overshadowed in certain conditions you know conditions by epic weapons rather than actually using legendaries which is a weird thing because you'd always think that the legendary would be the best choice but it's simply just not the case but let me know what you guys think let me know where you would rate your choices which ones you think i did an injustice to and more importantly once we see the new weapons that come out with world slayer we will revisit this table and see if some things have changed maybe some of these are getting balanced maybe some of these are getting changed and we'll get a whole slew of new weapons in here 30 to be exact and we'll see where they fall in these categories but other than that it's just super important to me that you have a fantastic morning afternoon and evening wherever you are in the world and until next video fucking cheers they want the best of me now, best of me now, best of me now, best of me. They want the best of me now, best of me now, best of me now, best of me. They want the best of me now.